Today on Try Hard Theater. G Skill, Trident Z Neo. Olo, we. Olo, why? Olo, Olo, why? Se habla espanol. Olo, why? I don't And of course, Corsair, Dominator, Platinum. You know the name now on the RAM? Threadripper. Well, and also a little bit of Ryzen 9, 3950X. So, Threadripper. Faster memory makes the processor faster, anecdotally. And G Skill Trident Z Neo, this is a 3600 kit. The Corsair Dominator Platinum, also 3600, but with tighter timings. And the OLOY is a kit of memory that you can actually buy, because I've been trying to, it, like, this is 64 gigs. I've been trying to pick up another 64 gig kit for a couple of weeks. And when it's been in stock, it has been ludicrously expensive. Probably tells you something. But the OLOY memory kit, 32 gig, CL16, 2020-38, in fine print at the bottom. And then some of the other numbers is like 800 and some. 128 gigs in four sticks. Quad ranks. Quad ranks is long overdue. Because you can do 128 gig with a Ryzen 9 3950X, but we're testing it in Threadripper. The 3970X retail. Although AMD did send me some press CPUs, thank you. Got a lot of systems to build and a lot of testing to do. So retail Threadripper, yeah. Might be a game changer for content creation. My time is sliced into very small slices. So the quicker I can get things done, the better, the more valuable it is. Threadripper is gonna do that because, good Lord. For our testing, we're mainly using the Pharonix test suite. The thing that I wonder about with different memory is do you really notice a difference? Can you complete jobs more quickly? So with the Pharonix test suite, we're using something called Selenium. Selenium sort of automates a web browser and lets you do stuff. The whole idea with Selenium is that you can measure how long it takes to do certain things on the internet. And a lot of cores is not gonna help you in the case of AMD Ryzen Threadripper, unless you're a software developer, in which case you could be developing software and testing it at the same time, again, using Selenium. Turns out I do a fair bit of that. So with Selenium, you can launch a web browser and click on a web page and do stuff. And the faster and more completely that completes, maybe the faster you can get some testing out the door. Maybe it makes sense to give developers a script file that lets them run all that locally as opposed to on a dev server, especially if you've got a lot of horsepower. This is not something that's gonna happen on like a quad core or a six core laptop at any reasonable speed, at least for complicated projects. So yeah, the other thing is memory, like just general memory testing, things like 7-zip and other stuff that strictly just use memory bandwidth. Maybe you're doing a big render job with something like V-Ray, and if the difference between 3600 memory and 3200 memory is 20 minutes on your render job, maybe that's worth it. Maybe it's 20 minutes on an eight hour render job. Maybe that's not worth it. So there's some interesting things at work here. The other thing to keep in mind with Threadripper is that the memory speed, while 3600 is the sweet spot, that's an overclock and we will be testing 3600, but also 3200 is supported, but with more higher density sticks of memory, technically that also becomes an overclock. So the G-Skill Trident Z Neo, this is four sticks of eight gigs. So with the G-Skill Trident Z Neo kit, we have four sticks of eight gigs. With the Dominator Platinum 64 gig kit, we have four sticks of 16 gig. So we've doubled the memory density per stick of memory. Generally, that will run better at a higher speed than more sticks of memory. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll revisit this later, like testing eight sticks of memory on Threadripper as opposed to four. But with the OLOI, OLOE, OLO, OLOE, OLO, four sticks of 32 gig. So eight, 16, 32 gigs of memory per stick, so this is a total of 128 gigs. Which, by the way, this is the only way that you're gonna get 128 gigs in a system like a Ryzen 9 3950X. It has four memory slots, so you're gonna be running in, you know, dual channel, quad ranks, etc. This memory, it's Micron, 
unlike the other two, which are Samsung. And this is 3200 with fairly loose, fairly not great timings at 1620, 2038. Unlike the other two though, this memory is not ludicrously expensive, but it is slower. So on to the benchmarks. So the most interesting result here is probably Indigo, V-Ray, and Darktable. Darktable is useful for photo manipulation, and so the Pharonix test here shows how fast it takes to complete a job in seconds. Now normally with the Pharonix test suite, I like to have jobs that take longer, like for the blender test, something that takes a couple of hours to run or, or whatever, because then you can see meaningful differences in the amount of time that it takes to render something. So here we're seeing it complete several seconds quicker with the Corsair Dominator memory. Now keep in mind the Corsair Dominator memory is only 64 gigabytes, whereas the OLOY memory is 128 gigabytes. It's also interesting that the Trident Z Neo memory, even though it's 3600, is so much slower than the other two kinds of memory that are presented here. I did run out of memory doing some of the timed compile tests, like with uh, LLVM. I got an OOM error the first time that I ran that. Rejuggled some things, closed Chrome, closed some browser tabs, closed everything on the machine, and then we were, you know, basically good to go to get the Pharonix testing done with the 32 gigabytes of memory. I definitely think that if you're buying a $2,000 CPU, you're gonna be spending about as much on memory. So, you know, take these benchmarks with a grain of salt, if you will. There is a difference in performance. I mean, the more expensive memory is faster, but not as much as synthetic benchmarks like the S&P RAM speed would lead you to believe. This mix of tests in the Pharonix test suite is, is a pretty good mixture of synthetic and more real world-ish benchmarks. So things like the RAM speed test and 7-zip, it's just gonna give you a number. I mean, 7-zip is a little bit real world, maybe if you're doing a lot of compression or decompression tasks, but not really, not for this test. But you look at things like Selenium and PostgreSQL, which is a database benchmark, these are useful numbers to know exactly how much faster your system is going to be with these particular things. The difference between 3200 and 3600 is not really as much as suggested by 3200 and 3600. You actually have to look at those sub timings because the 3600 sub timings on this Dominator Platinum memory is tight. It is really, really, really tight. Like the wafer supply from TSMC, in the immortal words of Lisa Sue. That was, that was from Dr. Cutrus. so eh, it's fine. Now on screen here, we sort of talked about it before, but this is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3000 series memory table density versus speed configuration guide. So when we talk about memory at, at an overclock and memory like how stable it is, that kind of thing, this is what we've got to work with. Now I have another kit of memory that I can't talk about yet. It's not under NDA, but it's complicated. 3600 quad ranks, meaning 3600 and 128 gig configuration, that is a strain on the integrated memory controller on Threadripper, on Ryzen 3000. It is more problematic to achieve those really high clock speeds when you have four ranks of memory. It's also true that you, you may not realize it, but you know, going from single channel to dual channel, you're gonna double your speed because the, the memory can be you know, sort of kept busy. But you also get performance increases for more ranks, more of a performance increase than you do for more memory. Hardware Unboxed recently did a test where it's like two sticks of memory versus four sticks of memory. In a lot of cases, four sticks of memory, but not every case, four sticks of memory was faster. So the same thing is also true when you're talking about ranks of memory. So think of a rank as basically a dim stacked on top of another dim stacked on top of another dim. So we're talking about these quad ranks. So there's four stacks on each stick. So the memory controller can ask one rank, hey, go do something, and then the next rank, hey, go do something, and then the next rank, hey, go do something, and the other rank, hey, go do something. So it can send those commands and then it can transfer data. The thing that takes a long time is transferring data. The thing that doesn't really take a long time is sending commands. So if the memory controller is very sophisticated and it can spend all of the memory bus time actually doing transfers because it's sending the commands in a staggered way to each rank. When you have memory channels, they can operate completely independently. So it's always guaranteed to be additive. When you have ranks sharing a channel, it's not guaranteed to be additive. And when you physically have more than one stick of memory on a channel, the timings have to be looser. The timings cannot be as tight because the memory is physically farther away. Whereas with this, the ranks are all physically on one dim. The timing is gonna be a known quantity. You know, you've got the whole T topology thing or not. 
entering the equation. It's like, oh, T topology is better because the timing is going to be more consistent between DIMMs. The integrated memory controller doesn't have to be as sophisticated, maybe, to take into account timings. The other really interesting thing with the supported memory table from AMD is that if you're running four sticks, one DIMM per channel on Threadripper, meaning it's four channels, you're running four DIMMs, like our 128 gig from Oloy, it's not technically an overclock, whereas the 3600 here, it is. But this Dominator Platinum kit on every board and CPU that I've tested, which is kind of a lot now, 3600 has been stable. Now, I have no doubt that the Trident Z kit would be just as fast as the Dominator Platinum. The timings are similar if they were both 64 gig kits. The extra ranks will help in speed, even beyond just the timings, but also some of the tests that I was running. 32 gigs really not quite enough. If you do move up to four DIMMs, the official supported speed is 2667. And the reason for that seems to be that whole, you know, T topology versus not T topology and the loose timings that I was mentioning before. AMD can't guarantee it, and it is a strain on the integrated memory controller. Long story short, yes, the more expensive memory is faster and will complete jobs more quickly. You might save 30 minutes on an eight hour render when we're talking about something like V-Ray. The system probably would be snappier and more responsive with things like Selenium and web browsing with something like the Corsair Dominator 3600. But it's up to you to make the call as to whether or not the cost differential is there. Me, I'm pretty happy with the relatively inexpensive OLOY memory kit, but I would like to get a 256 gig kit and do some more testing on Ryzen Threadripper. 256 gigs means we're gonna have eight sticks, eight sticks of four ranks. So whether that's another OLOY kit, or maybe I can get 3533 or 3400, something a little faster than 3200 working, maybe that'll be pretty good. I think it's gonna be true that if you spend the time to work with the Ryzen timing calculator to tune your memory, get the latency down, but preserve stability, that it's gonna be worth your time to do that. I think it's, it's gonna show in the benchmarks because overall, there's not as much of a difference in benchmarks between these three memory kits as I thought there would be in most regards, but there's more of a difference than I thought there would be in other regards. So take a look at the benchmarks, digest the data, decide for yourself. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a fun project to take a look at 3264 and 128 gigs of memory in four sticks on Ryzen Threadripper. If you have ideas for other tests that I can do with these kits of memory, let me know. Oh, and the 3950X formal benchmarks are coming. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Cause, woo!